Hi, I'm Deidre Jordan with Catamaran Site, a site where you can buy or sell your boat, as well as access uh, great resources such as these videos, where we feature different guests, um, specifically talking about uh, catamarans. And so um, today we're featuring Dudley Dix. Welcome, Dudley. How are you doing today? Hi, Deidre. I'm doing fine. Well, thank you. Um, thanks for inviting me to participate in this. Yeah, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us on Catamaran Site today. So just start off by telling us uh, a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm South African, born in Cape Town. My dad was a provincial champion in Flying Dutchman. We lived on the side of a lake, and uh, so I grew up with boats. I was with my dad from about four years old, and uh, also got into surfing. I spent a lot of time surfing as, as well as sailing. I've done uh, four transatlantic voyages on boats that I've designed. A um, lot of, of uh, coastal racing and coastal cruising experience around the coasts of Cape Town, Cape of, Cape of Storms, which so many cruising world, uh, cruising sailors dread. Um, yeah, I've spent a lot of time on the water. Wow, you've done quite a lot. I'm sure you have a lot of great stories that you could share with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you mind telling us about your DH-550 design and her smaller 43 and 47 foot catamaran sisters? Okay, the, um, the way that the DH-550 actually uh, originated is I, I designed a boat which I had raced across the Atlantic three times. It's, it's a plywood boat called the DD-38 which is radius trying. So it looks like it's a round bulge boat, but it's not, it's actually built with sheet plywood. And Phil Harvey uh, had known me for years. He'd seen the boats that I'd designed and built and he, he loved the concept, but he was a catamaran sailor. And he contacted me and said he was wanting a boat for cruising with his family. He was a, a, a a boat builder, he built catamarans professionally, but he wanted a plywood boat for his for his own boat. And uh, he liked that construction concept, so he contacted me and said, can I design it? Uh, using that construction method. Um, I didn't have enough time available, so we agreed that we would do it between us. Um, so I would do the basic design and he would do some of the detailing. So that's the origin of it. Um, as the boat turned out, it's a it's, it's a surprisingly fast cruiser. It's not it's not a racing boat. It's intended as a cruiser, but it's a fast cruiser. And uh, Phil launched his boat, I think now about fourteen or maybe fifteen years ago, and uh, cruised with his family. That boat has now been sold twice. It's now based in uh, Florida. Um, all of the owners have been extremely happy with those boats. Then the, the 47 originated with a company in UK, uh, Exocetus Marine. They wanted to build something similar, but a bit smaller, and to develop a CNC kit for it. And uh, so we, we contracted the 55 to 47, keeping the same hull beam um, but shortening the length of the hulls and, and reducing the width of the bridge deck. Then, then Exocetus uh, commissioned uh, the 43 foot sister to it. And I didn't want to do it on the same basis as I'd done the 47 because the boats, the, the hulls would have been getting too fat. So I kept the underbody slim and introduced a step in the top sides to keep accommodation width while keeping the, the drag down uh, from the, for the narrower underbody. And, uh, and then the, the 38 is, is still a concept in my head. Um, that will be based on the 43. That's the same basis, basis that the 47 is based on the 55. And uh, I expect to be starting on that one probably within about five or six months. Okay. 
Now, share with us some of the main differences um, when designing a catamaran versus a monohull. Well, they, they, they're very different, of course, in terms of structure. Um, because the, the loading, the structural loading on a, on a monohull is very different from the structural loading on a catamaran. Um, the catamaran hull is, is designed to operate upright, it's vertical most of the time, whereas the monohull, the hull is, is, is heeled over most of the time, unless you're going directly down when uh, the boat is operating at, operating at an angle through the water. But the big difference is in the in the structure, and of course in the accommodation. The you can get so much more into a catamaran of the same of of the same length as 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 a monohull. It, it's uh, so um, anyway. The, it's it's a it's it's a totally different thing. You you know you can't go into a catamaran design. Um, thinking monohulls, you've got to think catamaran when you're designing catamaran and vice versa. Although the the um, DH550 hull is actually my DD26 cruising, it's it's a trailer sailor hull which I expanded and pushed and pulled in CAD to get it to the proportions that I wanted for the for the 55 foot cat. So the hulls have got a they've got a common basis, but other than that, they, they're so very different. Now for your new 38 foot design, what is the main design goal you're looking to achieve? Um, wanting a boat that is going to be economical for a family, give them the space for a, for a family of, of an adult, two adults and, and uh, two, two kids or three kids, four kids. So we're looking at pretty much the same number of berths as we've got in the bigger boats, but contracted into a much smaller space because a 55 foot boat is a big boat for somebody to, to finance you. Building that big boat, logistically it's a problem. Getting it to the water, you need to build it near to the water to be able to launch it. Um, but the, the cost of building a boat like that and then also operating it. You know, you can you can sail it single-handed, but you really need to have the experience to, to sail that big boat single-handed. The 38-footer is a, a much much easier boat to for for, a, for a, a young family to handle. So that for in in in, in uh, monohulls, for a family of four, I would normally say to people, you really need to be looking 43, 45, maybe even 48 feet. To have the space that you need, right. in the cat, in the cat, you can get it at thirty-eight feet to, to forty feet, that sort of range. Okay, so do you think the thirty-eight to forty-foot range is the ideal size for a family that's looking to go and uh, cruising on a catamaran? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. And and um, you know, although I, you know, we started with the big, with the fifty-five, because that's what full wanted, but been working down towards. The most popular size range, and that popular size range is 38 to 43 feet. So, when you're designing these catar catamarans, I'm sure there's a lot to consider uh, when weighing um, kind of comfort versus performance. So, from your perspective, what's the most important design when uh, that you're considering when you're designing a catamaran? Well. Uh, I'm designing primarily for families. You know, I'm, I design boats primarily for amateur builders to build themselves. And uh, safety, of course, is a is the most important uh, criterion. And also, working with amateur builders, you've got to uh, uh, you, you can't you're not working with people who've got the same building skills as a professional builders. So I try to build in more safety factor into the into the detailing of the boat, into the structure of the boat, so that you, there's less chance of the of the builder messing up and ending up with a weak boat. So um, I don't I don't like to overpower the boat. So these boats are on the sail plans, we actually state this is a cruising boat. Don't try to fly a hole with it. So I design the rigs so that if you're going to if you're going to fly a hull, you're at risk of breaking the rig. 
because we would rather the mast falls down than they turn the boat over. Wow. So uh, over the length of your career, um, how have you seen the catamaran designs change over the years? Um, the, the main difference that I see is that 20 years ago, 25 years ago, catamarans were designed for crossing oceans. And then those boats were used for charter. Most of the cats we see now are designed for charter. And most of, the, most of them are really not good ocean crossing boats. Uh, so that, that's the big difference that I see. Mm. Yep, a lot of uh, chartering. I, I actually have done some, some chartering on catamarans, so uh, I can definitely, and there's a lot to choose from when you go to pick a, a charter boat and different types of catamarans. Yeah. So definitely agree with you there. Um, who is generally building your designs and where in the world usually is that located? Um, my boats are built all over the world. Uh, I've had, my boats have been built in 50 countries Sorry, not 50, 90, 90 countries. Wow. Um, and they, we get orders from all sorts of strange places. Um, I got a call last week, or not a call, I got an email last week from a sailmaker in St. Petersburg, Russia. And he said to me that I am one of the most popular designers in Russia. He makes more, more sales for my boats than other designs. And uh, in fact, I, pulled out the database the other day and, and had a look and uh, we've we've had uh, we, we nearly 400 boats have been built in Russia and in, in fact we've got a an order today for a uh, trailer sailor from Vladivostok um, got boats built literally all over the world in, in Vietnam and Indonesia all really everywhere. Any thoughts on why you think you're so popular in Russia in particular? Um, I'd be, I think primarily because my background is amateur boat building. And the detailing that I do is aimed at amateur boat builders. And most people in Russia cannot afford to buy a boat. So most boats that are launched in Russia are built by the owners. And also I have a a very good um, reputation for being approachable by the builders. Um, so if I've got a question, I'd rather they ask me than ask somebody across the bar from them or in, in the yacht club. So I invite questions. We very, we very seldom do get questions, but also the drawings are, are very clearly detailed. So most people will buy the plans, I might get an odd photograph from them while they're building, and then they'll send me possibly a photo when they launch the boat. Um, so that that is a big part of it. You've got to be approachable for the for the amateur builders if needed. Absolutely. Now, where do you see catamaran design going over the next ten years? What's your best forecast of what what that looks like? Um. I, th I see them see for go fast features coming into the boats and and I don't like that personally. I think that some of the features that are going into boats are not really healthy for the boats, particularly the reverse bows. You know, there are fashions that come into boat design, and fashion is a very bad reason for putting anything into a boat. And uh, you know it's it's all very well for the, for the really experienced skipper to be sailing a boat that's got a, a heavily reverse rate bow um, for wave penetration if he's going to be sailing close to shore for racing and so on. But I really don't like that for uh, as a concept for ocean crossing. Um, I prefer to see more uh, more moderate boats for for uh, ocean crossings. And most of the boats that I'm designing are for ocean crossings rather than for coastal use. With the catamaran, catamaran market really picking up as of late, do you foresee new designers potentially entering the market? 
Uh, there's, I don't know that there's actually more designers. There, there, there seems to be a fairly static number, but it sort of goes through rotation. You know, the, the older designers sort of run out to the, through the end of the, of the lifespan. And, uh, you know, I'm heading that way myself. Um, and the younger guys come in at the bottom. Um, the, so I don't, I don't know that we're going to see many more. But there's, it's healthy that you, you start seeing, you know, the input from different designers creates different styles, uh, gives people more options. Right. Right. Do you work with anyone else with designing or are you a I'm, I, I work by myself. I, I learned long ago. I, I, you, I, I, at one time I had three staff working for me and I found that it was sometimes a battle to get them to draw exactly what I wanted because they, they see themselves as creative people, but sometimes what they've got in mind is not what I want. And uh, in the end, I decided, no, I work better by myself. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just that kind of person. I'm, I'm basically an introvert. <laughs> and, uh, and introverts are more creative working by themselves. Yeah. Uh, you, put, you put an introvert into a, into a committee and the loudest person in the committee is the one that carries and the introvert might have better ideas, but they get lost in the noise. And uh, I find if I'm working by myself, I, it's, it's my own ideas. I tend to be a lateral thinker and I go through cycles. I'd, I might do th three or four concepts on a boat or I draw something and I don't quite like that. So I draw another version of it until I get what I want. And uh, I can do that if I'm working by myself. So the business is just my wife and myself. She does all the bookkeeping and, um, and the orders and that sort of thing. And I do the designing and the web work. And she does all the printing also. Um, and uh, and it, it, it works very well that way for us. I've got a tremendous number of designs and I've got a very broad range of, of designs. Um, I draw the boat that the client wants or the client needs, sometimes a client really wants something that they don't need. Um, I, I, I like a boat to be pretty. I don't like to see ugly boats. And uh, so I, I work hard to make the boat look very pretty, but at the same time, it must sail very well. And, and as a result, a lot of my designs, people look at them and say, oh, that's a pretty boat, but it's not gonna sail well. And then it'll sail past them. And uh, that's the best thing. It's, it's, it's bad to design a boat that looks fast and isn't, but it's great to design one that looks slow and is actually fast. Absolutely agree. Well, you've had a great success and really built a, a great name for yourself. So, you know, congratulations on, on everything that you've accomplished through the years. And um, for those watching this video, if they're interested in learning more about your designs or how they could um, purchase build plans from you, um, how would you advise them? Uh, I'm approachable by phone or, or email or uh, through my website is the best. Uh, the website is, is dixdesign.com, D-I-X-D-E-S-I-G-N.com. They can, they can contact me by email from the website. Um, email is, is my preference. It gives me time if they've got questions. It gives me time to, to put down really uh, comprehensive answers rather than answering telephone questions. Great. Well, thank you, Dudley, so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure getting to hear a little bit more about you and your designs. And thank you all for joining uh, today on Catamaran Site. Thank you, Deidre.